California is no stranger to wildfires, especially in recent years. But as time passes, we often forget the tragedies of the past. Today we'll explore the history of the Madera Sugar Pine Mill and its great fire in 1922 through the eyes of George Tolliday, a worker who bore witness to the blaze. Hi, I'm Ken Machoyan. I'm on staff uh, with the uh, railroad operations crew at the Yosemite Mountain Sugar Pine Railroad, a wonderful tourist uh, attraction uh, that used to uh, be the Madera Sugar Pine Lumber Company's logging railroad here in the Sierra Nevada mountains uh, just below the south gate entry of Yosemite National Park. The Sugar Pine Lumber Company uh, uh, absorbed uh, two earlier lumber companies, the California Lumber Company and the Madera Flume and Trading Company, which operated from the 1870s through the 1880s. The, uh, the original location of the uh, Madera Sugar Pine Sawmill and Main Camp is about uh, one half mile south of the current location of where the Yosemite Mountain Sugar Pine Tourist Railroad operates. The uh, current railroad uh, op is a section of the former logging railroad that extended out from that sawmill. Today it uh, still continues in that area as a uh, uh, residential community. S a few of the original buildings uh, are uh, privately owned and renovated and in use as private residences or vacation homes. The Madera Sugar Pine Lumber Company uh, had been in successful operation uh, for many years, um, uh, two, two decades uh, since 1899. It had built an extensive sawmill operation, uh, quarters or lumber camp uh, for its employees, both the married and unmarried employees, an extensive company store, uh, complete cookhouse, uh, payroll office, administrative offices, uh, equipment uh, buildings and uh, repair centers for the variety of equipment that was used both by the railroad and the uh, tree felling uh, lumber operations in the forest. On September 9, 1922, the Madera Sugar Pine Mill caught fire, burning down the facilities and preventing any milling from being completed until the mill could be rebuilt and the winter had passed. George Tolliday remembers that fateful day. Recreation Hall was full of people. Uh, they were showing a moving picture in there, you know, and it was full, and then they'd have a dance usually after the picture was over. But everybody was in the show, and I'd, I'd killed a deer, so I went by the theater. I, I told Fred that I went by that. I said, Fred, looks to me like there's fire over there under that tramway. And uh, so we went right on up and through that off, and I ran back down the hill and do his peckerman. One of the Speckman boys, Indian boy, lived over there with old Major Darnell. Uh, he uh, was sitting on the bench outside the theater, and I said, Dewey, run over and tell the uh, fireman to blow the fire whistle because I think there's a fire down there. And I said, I'm going to run over and get a hose and see if I can handle it. He, he did. He ran over there, and they found the fire whistle, and they would come pouring out of that building. And uh, then yeah. within 30 minutes, the stacks fell down. And oh. that fire just sucked right underneath that tramway and right into the sawmill and, and out. Uh, the thing was on fire all over. I run out and grabbed a hose and started playing the hose on them where I could. And the fire just kept getting closer and closer. And all you do back up and finally drop the hose. You couldn't go and shut it off. And then the water ran out. That happened in 25 places around the yard, and first thing you knew, the uh, tanks was dry up on the hill, and the pump couldn't work because the, the boiler room burned down. There was no, there was no steam to, to run the pump. The pump worked until it ran out of steam, and then the, then there was that just burned up and no water anywhere at all. All they had was whiskey. <laughs> And they drank that. <laughs> <laughs> my house was right behind the company cabin, they called it, the guest house. So they had a great big guest house there. And my house was right behind it. And I got the boys that worked for me down there to carry my household goods back up on the hill away from there, away so as to 
save that if I could, because I could see everything was going to go. And they carried it all back up there, you know, and then we got old Charlie Hoon. He was the blacksmith helper. He was an Austrian. And he was drunk, too. And I put him up on the top of that guest house. And <laughs> the, my wife had some, about five gallon of water and some cement wash tubs back behind the house. And I went and got that in a pan, and I handed it up to him, and I said, now, Charlie, <laughs> if this if this building burns up, you're going to burn up with it. And I said, at this time, this little fire, you go <laughs> sprinkle some water on and put it out. And you know, he saved that building. Well, and of course, it saved my house, too, then. And they used that building to house the uh, construction men who framed the sawmill that went during the winter. And they used it for, uh, uh, to house those boys. And it came in mighty handy, too, I'll tell you. And then, of course, I had my house fixed, but that was safe. After Reconstruction, the mill was able to resume production for about another decade until the early 1930s, when the mill finally closed its doors for good. Today, there's not much left. So I'm standing in front of what was the log pond where the logs were dumped from the railroad uh, into this pond behind me from the uh, trains bringing the logs from the forest of the Madeira Sugar Pine Company. The logs were uh, dumped in here from the railroad. They uh, tended to be here in the mill pond for anywhere from a few days, to maybe as much as five days to a week, awaiting being pulled up into the mill to be sawn into rough planks. The logs were pulled up, sawn into uh, rough planks. They were bundled, uh, about 10 planks to a stack, held together by large iron clamps. They look like large staples. Uh, holding those tin planks together into a tight bundle. Those bundles were placed into a V-shaped trough about the, the length of my arms outstretched. That wooden trough was built 54 miles from the Sugar Pine Mill up here in the uh, Sierra Nevada mountains, 54 miles downhill all the way to the town of Madera in the San Joaquin Valley where the finishing mill and the headquarters for the Madera Sugar Pine Company were. In fact, the town of Madeira was initiated for the purposes of the Madeira Sugar Pine Company. And the word Madeira in Spanish does indeed mean lumber or wood. The Lewis Creek that flowed through this area was dammed up by this earthen berm that I'm standing on, forming the log pond. This same uh, water fed the flume that carried the lumber down into Madeira. So we're just beyond the log pond where the logs were pulled up into the sawmill and cut into rough planks and then placed into the flumeway. The sawmill was part of a large community uh, and uh, gathering of buildings, all for the purpose of sawing and drying the lumber and placing it into the mill. The tramway was a network of, uh, of a small uh, uh, railway cart, so to speak, that transferred the lumber from the mill out to the drying stacks and the preparation stacks for going into the flume. We know from George Tolliday's uh, uh, verbal explanation and description of what occurred that fateful uh, day in 1922 of the large mill fire, that the mill fire started in the vicinity of that tramway which transported the lumber from the sawmill to the uh, drying and preparation era area. Behind me uh, stands one of the few remaining buildings of any kind that shows any, any existence of the former, uh, the former mill site. It's the uh, electrical power generation plant, and it's built out of concrete and stone, which made it uh, durable and survived the fire. Uh, the, it was fed from steam from the main uh, boiler powerhouse, and that steam turned generators, which in turn created electricity to uh, power what few electric motor driven equipment that was at the mill, as well as a system of electrical lighting that had replaced any uh, earlier uh, lantern lighting. What's left of the mill's railroad is being preserved for the public by a family from Switzerland. That Swiss family that emigrated here and rebuilt this portion of the railroad uh, as a unique experience for tourists today to have in southern Yosemite was the Rudy Stauffer family. 
and his successive generations. Today, the third generation of the Stauffer family is still the ownership and operators of the Yosemite Mountain Sugar Pine Railroad.